Greetings, humans. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about machine learning, real broad strokes. Um, what is it? Is it AI? No, not really. It's kind of a part of AI. AI, though, kind of means robots <laughs> pretending to be humans doing general brain-like things. Machine learning is kind of like shallow AI, really good for very narrow, specific things, really good at doing one task. So I'm not a data scientist, and I'm not a mathematician. Normally, when you Google around for this stuff, how to do it, how to get on board with it, you're just going to be bombarded with equations and jargon. So I'm going to try and keep it real broad strokes just because when I was trying to figure this stuff out, um, th there were a few kind of nuggets when I was looking around that were real gold. So let's try and get that in here. So machine learning is the study of algorithms that learn from examples and experience. Um, but let's set that in an example. Say we're going to traditionally write a program to tell images of apples from images of oranges. Um, and it's going to, if you're going to do that traditionally, you're going to look at a lot of rules. And maybe you'd say, OK, well, maybe a round thing, maybe count the green pixels, maybe count orange pixels. Um, but you know, what if it's an image of a basketball or a green balloon or something? And what if it's black and white and you get unexpected things? Like, that's not even round. <laughs> so we, we know that's an apple, we know that's an orange, and we know because of our experiences. And we can kind of do the similar thing with machines. And we need a lot of data. Um, and this kind of problem is what machine learning is really good for. Fuzzy problems that are traditionally really hard to program, really hard to automate, that kind of need a lot of human hand-holding. So, I'm going to try and give a brief overview of neural networks because it's the one thing that I was really banging my head against a wall for ages with um, and is particularly mass heavy, I think. So it's based on our biological neurons, this alien looking thing. We've got about 100 billion of those in our heads. Um, and how it works is you have some electrical inputs and then the neuron does a thing and sends a signal down the neural pathway and then that excites other neurons and so on and so forth a few hundred billion times. Um, with machine learning we've kind of got this artificial representation of that. We've got some electrical things coming in here which are just numbers and each of these has a weight and then the neuron does a thing and then passes it along. So what does that look like? Say we've got a weight of 2.5. I know I said no maths, but this is kind of <laughs> as heavy as it gets. Um, and then some minus values here. So yeah, they can be, they can be positive, they can be negative. And then if we get a, an input signal from one of these, we can have not very much here, have a really strong input here, but because it's negative, um, hello, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not very activated. And vice versa, if we have kind of a light signal here, it's got a heavy weight to it, very strong signal here, but it's not as negatively weighted, so we've still got an activated thing. What does that look like in a network? Because we are talking about neural networks, Imagine each one of those is what we've just seen. We have some inputs, a few layers, and some outputs. This is really simplified. This would be a shallow network. So when you hear about deep learning and stuff like that, we're talking about neural networks, but many more of these. Um, each, of these would, each of these inputs, each of these neurons, is connected to every other neuron down the layer. So we need something to pipe through to it. Let's take this MNIST data set. It's uh, a data set of handwritten numbers uh, from 0 to 9. There's about 10,000 of them. And let's pick this one. 
as an example. So what we want is we want to we want to condense each value of these pixels from naught to one. So black will say is naught, white will say is one. Everything in between will give a float value, and then we will use this as our input. So every single pixel here uh, we can imagine is a naught through to one. And every single pixel there will be connected to every single neuron on the first layer. Um, I don't have time to draw a million lines <laughs> from every single one of those pixels to the last one. So I'm going to represent it like that. Um, so when it's untrained, each of these is going to be a random weight um, just to initialize it. And then when we pipe it through, we're going to get some weird results. Some neurons are going to activate. S some of these are going to have crazy things. And it's going to say, eh, it's, yeah, it's a zero. Maybe it's a five. Maybe a nine. I don't know. Um, and then that's where we train it and we give it, we pass it the result to a loss function. And we say, well, we, want, we know that's a nine. We want that to be a nine. So we calculate what we've got versus what we want and it comes up with a lost value. And then it goes back through the network, nudging every single weight of <coughs> the neurons and the inputs to those neurons and based on the decisions that led to that result. So if we go back to this example, say that was what the weights were, we'd nudge it ever so slightly and the result will be slightly different for every single neuron. And that's training, that, and that would be considered one iteration, one epoch, if you like. Uh, but we need a lot of data and a lot of variety of that data to shove through it thousands and thousands of times to get that loss as close to zero as we can. But when it is trained, we can shove a slightly different number nine through it and and we get something possibly like this. Um, but what happens kind of down these layers, down the line? Um, because that on these ones, because they're running off single pixel values, they're going to kind of be very small features, very small decisions. But as the layers build up, they start to um, composite. And you get slightly more detail from each one, and then it gets pretty confident that that's our nine. Um, so that's it very briefly. If you want to build something, um, I am a, a big advocate of the fact that we're developers. Um, we don't need to be data scientists to do this stuff now. Um, if we want to build Lego, we don't know, we don't need to know how to build the plastic moulds, how to build a Lego brick. So we've got some tools that we can use. I'm a really big fan of Keras, and that sits on a couple of different NL frameworks, my favourite being TensorFlow. It's got huge support by Google. Um, and if you've got just enough knowledge to be dangerous, you can crack on and get started with it. Some really good tutorials on that. And of course, it's JavaScript meetup, right? <laughs> so we've got TensorFlow, <laughs> JS. So um, the process we talked about training takes so many iterations, so much processing <coughs> power. It's, it's kind of slow for a browser to use but, or, or to do. What you can do is you can take a pre-trained network from your Keras and your, your TensorFlow and then pass it through to the browser and it can reuse it. And, using an, a pre-trained network is way, way, way quicker than training it. Um, so, yes. Thank you very much. Um. <laughs>